Now let us learn to measure humidity of the place. The air has some amount of water vapor present in it. This is called humidity and it is measured by a hygrometer which is made up of wet and dry bulb thermometer. The dry bulb thermometer has a bulb exposed to the air and it records the temperature of the atmosphere while the wet bulb thermometer has its bulb covered with a damp cloth. The difference between the two separate readings in the thermometers tells us about the humidity level of the air. When the maximum thermometer and the minimum thermometer readings show a big temperature difference, it means that the humidity level in the atmosphere is low. A small difference indicates humidity level is also very high. And if there is no difference, it means that the air is saturated. A hygrograph. This is a hygrometer. The dry bulb is tied to a damp cloth. Sorry, wet bulb thermometer is dried to a thermometer and dry bulb remains as such exposed to air. This is a hygrograph. A hygrograph can automatically and continuously record variations of humidity in the air on a graph paper. The actual amount of water vapor present in the air is called as absolute humidity. Now, relative humidity is the ratio between the actual amount of water vapor present in the air to the total quantity of water vapor that air can carry at a particular temperature. As it is a ratio, Relative humidity has no unit, while absolute humidity is expressed in grams per second, grams per centimeter cube. And the relative humidity is shown as a percentage. When the air can't absorb any more water vapor, the relative humidity is 100% and the air is said to be saturated. The temperature at which the air gets saturated is called as dew point and when the air cools below the dew point, it condenses and then forms clouds. Now let us learn air pressure. Air pressure. Air has weight, it occupies space and it exerts pressure. Air pressure can be measured by a portable instrument called as aneroid barometer. This is an instrument which carries no liquid and it is measured in units called millibars. Low pressure is an indication of stormy weather while high pressure is an indication of clear weather. Over the poles where it is very cold, there is a high pressure zone. And in the equatorial region has low pressure because the air is warm due to the intense heating by the sun. Now a barograph, it is a self-recording aneroid barometer and it continuously records the changes in the atmospheric pressure on a graph paper. Now how to measure the direction and the speed of wind? Wind is horizontal movement of air over the earth's surface. Wind moves from areas of high pressure to area of low pressure. When the hot air rises, it forms a low pressure area and the cold air from the surrounding high pressure area moves in. Thus, pressure creates winds. The speed of the wind depends upon the pressure difference between the two regions. The direction of the wind is observed with the help of an instrument called as wind wing. An anemometer is used to measure
This is an anemometer and it is used to measure wind speed. An anemometer is used to check the wind speed on a high vertical spindle semicircular cups attached to the ends of the horizontal spokes that are mounted on a spindle as you can see it in the picture. The concave sides of the cups offer resistance to the winds making the spokes rotate and this in turn moves the rod in the middle. An instrument at the base records the number of rotation and the dial of this instrument tells us the speed of the wind in kilometer per hour. In metrological laboratories, a self-recording wind speed measuring instrument called anemograph is used. Now let us learn weather maps. Maps that show a variety of meteorological features across a particular area at a particular point in time is defined as a weather map. Such maps are mainly used for research and weather forecasting purposes. In modern time, there are various types of weather maps available such as aviation map. This is a weather map showing India's weather condition as we have seen in televisions or in newspapers. Now, there are various types of weather maps available. This is an aviation map. This is a constant pressure chart map. And this is a surface weather analysis map. Now, let us learn the representation of temperatures on a map. The distribution of temperature on a map is shown with lines that joins places that have same temperature at a particular time. So this is an isotherm. In the same way, atmospheric pressure and rainfalls are also depicted through maps, through iso heights and iso bars. This is an iso height. Iso height is a line on the map that connects the places having the same amount of rainfall in a given period. Iso bar is a line on the map that connects places having the same atmospheric pressure at a given time or on average over a given period. Now look at this world map. It depicts the climate of the world. For the month of January. In January the sun shines vertically overhead the tropic of Capricorn. Hence it is summer in the southern hemisphere and winter in the northern hemisphere. During this period in the northern hemisphere land masses are cooler than the oceans. The isotherms bend towards the equator when they cross the land masses and towards the poles when they cross the oceans. In the southern hemisphere, the position of isotherms are just reverse. Thus, the map shows the position of isotherms on northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. This was all about the chapter. Here are the exercise answers.